It was when I was in the UK and I was over there for about 10 years um, in the late 80s and mid, mid 90s. And, you know, I realised that, that New Zealanders, although they were English speakers, um, were nothing like the English in many, many ways. Um, and part of our identity was our relationship, our historic relationship, which is pretty much unacknowledged by many of us, but with, with Māori, right? So um, I determined when I was over there that when I came back to New Zealand, I would do my best to, to learn Māori. Well, that's what's unique about New Zealand culture, really, isn't it, is, is the Māori language. That's what we turn to. When we think of the All Blacks, we almost immediately think of the haka, and um, you know, if people do go overseas and they called on to do something that represents their country, they th probably think of a Māori song, maybe one they've learned at school or so on. So, I think the younger generations, in particular, are more and more um, interested in you know, becoming part of learning Te Reo Māori. So, I think the defining moment for me was that I mean, I've been learning for two years um, when Hiniwehi Mohi stood up in front of the crowd. That, that all black game in the 1999 World mm. Cup, which we lost, <laughs> and sang the national anthem only in Te Reo Māori. Mm. Right? It was amazing. E hoa atua, right? And what happened back here? It was an explosion of criticism, and the rednecks came out of hiding. You know, it was terrible. I mean, she was so brave, you know, and so beautiful. Guess what? Now you have the crowd singing along. Right? Mm, that's, that's 20 years, isn't that's it? Twi in 20 years, we've moved from that terrible, terrible racist reaction, which is what it was, that fear reaction, bang, right? Yeah. <laughs> then right through to now where everybody's singing along. Yeah, maybe we will be a bilingual nation in 20 years' time.